165 Naira per litre fuel depot owners shown the federal government's directive. Marketers give conditions. Bank assets rise by 21% to 64.232 trillion Naira, says Central Bank of Nigeria. Just as global airlines market expected to reach $744 billion by 2026. And today's conversation is centered on patronizing homegrown solutions to food security and global inflation. This is Business Express on the network service of the NTA and we are reaching you from Abuja, the nation's capital. I am Musa Abubakar. Let's begin with uh, public-private partnership. Nigeria is a short investor. She is open for business through public-private partnership as the country seeks to breach the infrastructure gap. Secretary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, at the opening of the African Public-Private Partnership Network in Abuja, assured of profitable returns. African governments must also resist pressure to erect trade barriers for intra-African trade to flourish. Currently, intra-African trade amongst African states is about 10% of total exports. This is the lowest amongst other regions in the world. But we strongly believe that with the initiative of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, the situation will drastically improve. There is also the need for financial sector development by strengthening regulatory and institutional frameworks. I always say that uh, fund is a coward. It goes to an environment where it's well protected. We want to assure international community that their funds are well protected in Nigeria. Now, oil marketers on Sunday gave the federal government conditions that should be met in order to retain the pump price of petrol at 165 naira per litre. According to them, the cost of the commodity must be sold at the approved ex depot price at various depots, whether private or government owned, as this will enable filling stations to dispense the product at the regulated 165 naira per litre rate. They said that private depots were dispensing the commodity at higher rates than what was approved by the federal government despite the many challenges in the downstream oil sector. They made this known to the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority in Abuja, a development that made the agency to ask the marketers to report depots that were selling PMS above the approved price. The approved ex depot price of petrol is about 148 naira per litre, but retailers say private depot owners sell the commodity above 160 naira per litre. The present administration's effort at improving power generation in the country has received yet another boost with the approval for the construction of a power substation in Akwa Ibom State with residents in Cross River and Abia States benefiting. Immediate Power Senior Special Advisor to the President on Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Itai Nang, made this known while receiving government's delegation from the Federal Ministry of Power and Contractors. 
Senator Enan says the project is in fulfillment of President's vowed commitment to further establish the federal government's presence in Akwaibom State. The project site is going to take, let's say, the one area of land that is 300 by 300 square meters. And that they will build the splint, they'll build the transmission station and where they will lay the transformer and they will build the uh, staff quarters, right? And you will, uh, there will be access road. The Director of Transmission, Federal Ministry of Power, Philip Obaneve, says 30% of the contract sum of 6.5 billion Naira has been released for the immediate commencement of the work. Some residents of the area thank President Buhari for approving the construction of the power substation in the community. Willily Council <coughs> approve this project. Since it has been budgeted for, some monies were released and the contractor has been engaged. We are here today to take over the site so that actual construction, you can see it. We promise that because of our experience, we will deliver the job in time, even before the uh, duration of the project. The power substation is expected to supply electricity to Ibionibum, Itu, Ikono, in local government areas in Akwaibom State, Obio Sierra, and other communities in Odupani local government areas of Cross River State, as well as other communities in Abia State. In Uyo Nsika Okon. Now, that's why COVID-19 pandemic shocks global air travel is beginning to show serious signs of rebound as the air travel market estimated at 322.9 billion dollars in 2020 is projected to reach a revised size of 744 billion dollars by 2026. The global market for airlines industry data show accumulative annual growth rates of 12.7 percent in the forecast period. As investigations show a projected growth in the post-COVID-19 period will be led by connectivity, aircraft automation, global affluence, immersive worlds, among other factors. Now, the realization of an efficient non-oil export sector that will facilitate foreign exchange earnings and boost the nation's economy depends largely on the provision of major interventions by stakeholders manning the Nigerian seaports, Abouladi Salabi reports. The task of pulling the country out from among nations that rely on a monolithic means of revenue generation has resulted in adoption of several economic policies initiated by the federal government to realize an export expansion program for commodities like cocoa beans, sesame seeds, cashew nuts, and soya beans to the tune of 50 billion naira. While the policies serve as roadmap to the actualization of vibrant non-oil export value chain, the major channel of facilitation, which is the seaports according to data, ended about 191 million metric tons of cargo exports in 2019. Their proper seaport, which currently houses one of the largest shipments of consignment on a daily basis, is receiving attention as the congestion is ongoing to free the corridor of gridlock. Lake is being constructed intentionally to reduce human interference. Uh, the port, of course, naturally is going to have uh, access control gates. It means that if you do not have any business in the port, you will not come in. And uh, we are impressed that uh, we are going to have a port that will be able to compete with a lot of ports uh, in the world, not just in Africa. The task of driving an enviable non-oil sector in the country does not stop on the table of the Nigerian Port Authority as the nation's monetary authority. The Central Bank of Nigeria, through the RT200 FX program, set to generate $200 billion in foreign exchange from non-oil export in the next three to five years. How do we immediately create a dedicated export route for exporters so that their goods can leave? Many of those containers that bring goods into the country go out empty because of this problem. 
the African free trade zone is a free trade agreement is a great advantage that we could take 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 I mean use in this regard. And I think that if we do that, we could actually begin to turn towards that two hundred billion dollars within maybe two or three years. The establishment of ten export processing parks near port locations across the country by government. Management of the Nigerian Port Authority says is get towards boosting the country's non oil export trade by 50% in the next two years. Well, according to the selected food price watch data for May 2022 released by the National Bureau of Statistics, MBS, prices of the 43 food items that make up the food watch basket increase considerably. This is as associated with the impact of elevated energy prices caused by increased diesel cost and its pass through effect on transport cost for food items. We have in the studio an expert in processed food for export, an entrepreneur and trainer. He is the CEO of Business Visa Limited and Training, Sani Garba. You're welcome to Business Express. Thank you very much. <coughs> okay, looking at the efforts being made at the uh, what nation's uh, seaport and capacity building for MSMEs, uh, is Nigeria ready for the global market? Well, um, <coughs> it's a good attempt, but there is much more to, to, to add up to what they are doing. And um, to be precise, you know, before you now come up with a solution to a problem, you have to have an inventory of what is on ground first and uh, to accurately hit it. But the situation right now that um, we have uh, desperate foreigners who are agents, moreover to say, foreign agents who are now everywhere in, in Nigeria, especially our states where these products are, not even within the states, they are in the local governments, going for our own product at all costs. And looking at the assistance that the SMEs were looking for in processing these products, you see like an Indian person will go there, a processing machine, which is just my new, mm -hmm. you know, and instead of now government to invest in business people like us, mm -hmm. so that we could see visibly the achievement from point A to, to B, we will leave the SMEs going for this tense, competing with these foreigners mm. in their own locality okay. and in some cases directly in the farmland. And what does it take? The harvesting of this tense, they do it merely on ground. Let's take sesame for, for instance. They do it merely on ground. When packing all these things, they will now definitely sand has to come in mm. but some intentionally put in sand there because the foreigners buy it at no cost but okay. then they came up with a strategy they will chuck and check the sand uh, uh, content in it mm. and price it anyway to their own price uh, but why are we not investing in processing that is value addition Absolutely, that's where I'm heading to. Okay. If there is a proper inventory on how this thing should be, and what impact are these people bringing in on board, we should now invest rightly and see the benefit clearly. Processing simple machines that will take out the, the sand and bring out the real product that the standard is needed elsewhere. But because they don't have the processing machines, so these guys go there and buy it at our own determined cost. And for God's sake, how do they even get there? How do they take them out of this country? Okay, uh, aside uh, government, you are on the forefront of uh, this uh, uh, Made in Nigeria goods. You've been promoting Made in Nigeria goods. How That's has right. that been? Yeah, so far so good. And uh, I tell you, if all Nigerians will know the value of our own products. I tell you, there is no reason why we should be complaining or why we should be poor. God has given us the best of everything and in different varieties. That is why we see foreigners coming in desperado, going at all costs to our villages, to our farms, to buy these things at all costs. And we are looking and still contemplating whether these things are yet good or not. Come on, we have to wake up. Okay. There is so much what potential. What would you say we have done? 
both uh, government, the side of government and the private sector? And what do you think we need to be, I mean, what do you think needs to be done? Government need to partner with people like us, business people. Government is not, it, it's not a, a business oriented uh, uh, organization or entity. They should partner. Let the the private sector brings its own suggestions and they will now key into the policies that are hindering us from growing or what we even needed. This money that they're investing in, if you invest rightly, these things are not hidden. They are very obvious. It's just to hit the right button. Now we've, seen, we've seen various interventions by government. Yeah, but the impact, if okay. actually it impacts on people, they, the government doesn't need to talk. You don't need to say there is a government interpe uh, intervention. Is the, the beneficiaries that will be on the street saying, yes, this is what we benefited. This is where we are and this is it. But you see, because of lack of robbing minds, we are now struggling to say, yes, we have invested this. We have done this. We have done that. So liaising with each other, I tell you there's so much we can do. We have all the potentials and we can tap on it and take advantage of it. It's very obvious. And I believe any country, if you go to see the informal businesses going on now, it's almost 50-50 or greater than the formal ones going on. It's very obvious. Go to Kano and see. See the trucks coming from different African countries. Okay. Coming in to bring pick pack our own okay, goods. Let's, let's talk about standards at uh, nigerian goods meeting the right uh, certification that's a good one if you talk about standardization of certain things give nigerians any standard they will give you that standard with a plus you know why we are reluctant in that is because st um, nigerians know the the period or season for every product and if you want it, you can get it at that season, as fresh as anything. So, but if the market now is ready, the market comes with its own specification. It will tell you what standard they wanted. You cannot just start putting all standards without having the market ready. Because the market will specify what it wants. So, it's not an issue for Nigerians. But we have to get ourselves together, put in a Nigerian standard if we want because our own products superseded any other one elsewhere. Okay. Try other foreign uh, products, bring them back here, and you see the end yield will, be, will supersede the ones that they came from. Okay, uh, now, now there's global food shortage and also uh, inflation. Uh, how can be, uh, production be ramped up to meet in-country demand and also for export? Is to, to narrow to what we we specifically want it. Okay. If you see, because of uh, different varieties, we keep farming this, this bit, farm this and that, and that bit. So if we now narrow to what specifically do we want, we have no fear on all this. And what's, what's next for uh, a business visa, is it? Yes, business visa, business visa what's, and training. Yeah. What's next for? for, for business you? visa next is to have much more outlet and awareness and also try to harmonize with the government entities because government is the individual that is there. Sometimes when you make a slight change, you see the impact of the individual there because he related there, you will see, you'll be thinking if there is a kind of a change of policy. No, the policies are all there. The structures are there. There's a person there. So we're hopeful that we'll relate very well and bring out all these things and we, both sides will be happy with it. That Okay. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Sani Garba, for coming here to share your thought with us. CEO of Business Visa Limited and Trading. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Now, oil prices fell in early Asia trade on Monday, pairing gains from the previous session as fears of global recession weigh on the market even as supply remains tight amid lower APEC output, unrest in Libya and sanctions on Russia. Brent crude futures slip 35 cents to $111.28 a barrel, having jumped 2.4% on Friday. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures similarly dropped 32 cents to $108.11 a barrel after climbing 2.5% on Friday, while recession fears have weighed on the market over the past two weeks. Supply concerns linger, uh, linger 
preventing steeper price falls. Now let's take a trip to the commodities market. The Nigerian All Share Index closed the first half of 2022 with a gain of about 21.17% year to date, making it one of the best performing stock markets in the world. Bossida Ebel has more on the market in the week ended. The NGX All Share Index and market capitalization for week ended 1st July appreciated by 0.24%. To close the week at 51,829.67 basis points, with market capitalization at 27.9 trillion naira. At its turnover of 1.3 billion shares worth 24.4 billion naira in 22,155 deals, was traded by investors on the floor of the exchange. All other indices finished higher, with the exception of the NGX Afri Bank Value, NGX Afri DVO, NGX Mary Value, NGX Consumer Goods, NGX Oil and Gas, and NGX Industrial Goods indices, which depreciated, while the NGX Sovereign Bond indices closed flat. The financial services industry led the activity chart with 1 billion shares valued at 6.7 billion naira, traded in 11,352 deals. The conglomerates industry followed with 79,616 million shares worth 144.5 million in 689 deals. The third place was the oil and gas industry with a turnover of 72.9 million shares worth 1.8 billion naira in 1,799 deals. The top three equities were Mutual Benefits Assurance, Living Trust Mortgage Bank and Guaranteed Trust Holding Company. They accounted for 484.8 million shares worth 2.4 billion naira in 2,410 deals. A total of 7,158 units of exchange traded products ETPs valued at 1.5 million naira were traded in 17 deals as well as a total of 163,232 units of federal government bonds valued at 167.4 million naira were traded in 32 deals. 34 equities appreciated in price during the week, 29 equities depreciated in price, while 93 equities remained unchanged. Boss said the able business express. Well, it's a negative start on the Nigerian equities market this Monday as the bears dominated market sentiment. Uh, the All Share Index appreciated to 51,791.45 points from 51,829.67 in the previous session. Investors exchanged 194.121 million shares valued at 2.822 billion naira in 4,899 deals. Transcope Guarantee Trust Holding Company and UBA led the activity chart in terms of volume and value. Well, the Raps Business Express for today. Remember to keep in touch with us. So do send in your comments, observations, and suggestions. Also be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube on the NTS channel. Join us again on Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. I am Musa Bakar.